Okay, so I want to discuss a critical change that has occurred regarding RBX script signals in the Roblox API. Recently, Roblox has changed how callback functions that are connected to events execute when an event is fired. In the original model, when an event was fired, any callback functions attached to that event would be immediately executed afterwards. The main thread of execution would go through and execute all the callback functions for the event right away before doing anything else. This model is known as immediate events and it's what the Roblox game engine has been using since the beginning. However, Roblox has now changed it to deferred events. This means that when an event is fired, instead of the current thread going and executing all the callbacks for that event immediately, they instead are placed in a queue based on when events were fired, and then these callbacks are executed in order at a slightly later time in the current frame. This is why they are called deferred events, because the game engine is deferring them at a later point in the frame. We can read more about the rollout of this change in this dev forum post called Deferred Engine Events Rollout Update, and they rolled out this particular update in November of 2023, and it says, Hey creators, earlier this year we announced Deferred Engine Events, a feature which will allow us to improve the performance of the engine and therefore your experiences. Our goal for 2023 was to change the default, which is to say the behavior of places with signal behavior set to default, that's a property in the workspace by the way, from immediate mode to deferred mode. We have decided to take a slightly more incremental approach and today we'll be sharing what this means for you. Then they give us a little bit of a background of what deferred events are and it says, rather than resuming event handlers immediately, we queue them up and resume them all at once. This improves performance as code that would usually trigger an event can now complete without needing to run arbitrary event handlers, which may themselves trigger further events. This improves security as scripts will only run at specific points in the frame. Doing this eliminates an entire set of vulnerabilities that we would otherwise need to patch on a case by case basis. This will allow us to make additional optimizations in the future. So deferred events are a big pro, a big plus to the Roblox game engine, but they are going to affect how event handlers work in your games. And we're going to take a look at that in a little bit. But in this announcement, all new games that are created are going to have deferred events enabled by default. But the default enum inside of the signal behavior property in the workspace, the default of that is still set to immediate. And they're going to change that to deferred in February of 2024. So back in studio, inside of our workspace, we have our property called signal behavior. Now, most of your games are probably going to be set to immediate or default, and the default points to the immediate signal behavior. But then of course we have our new deferred signal event here. Now let's go ahead and first take an overview with immediate signaling with this example that I have set up here. I have three bindable events, bindable A, B, and C. And what's going to happen is we're listening to the heartbeat event. And once we've counted 100 frames, we're going to first fire bindable event A and then fire bindable event B. The function that's connected to bindable event A, what's going to happen with this one is it's going to go through and it's going to connect a callback function to bindable event B's event. And then it'll print out these into the console of bindable one callback executed and bindable two callback executed. Now with immediate signaling, what's going to happen is when the interpreter reaches this line right here, it's going to fire the event and that's going to be like, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to go through and execute all of the functions that are listening to bindable event A. So it's going to go and execute this callback function right here. And what does this callback function do? Well, it connects another callback function to bindable event B. Once it's done doing all of this, it's done executing all of the callbacks connected to bindable event A, then it's going to come back and then it's going to fire bindable B. And then it's going to go through and execute all of the callbacks attached to bindable B. And since we just connected a callback function to bindable B, then that means this is also going to execute. So with immediate events, both this print statement and this print statement is going to print into the console. And let's prove that. So we can run the game if we look in the console, once 100 frames has passed by, there we go, bindable one callback executed at frame 100 and bindable two callback executed also at frame 100. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what happens when we change the signal behavior to deferred, which is the one Roblox wants to change all games to. So with deferred enabled, if we run our game and when we hit the 100th frame, you're going to see bindable one callback executed 
and bindable to callback did not execute. So why is this the case? Well, let's go ahead and follow the logic of deferred events. When the interpreter goes in and it hits this line, so imagine we're in deferred signal behavior, it's going to fire the event, but instead of going through and executing all of the callback functions attached to this event, it's going to instead place them all in a queue at a later point in the frame. And that means the current threat of execution doesn't have to go through and waste its time executing all of these different callback functions attached to our event until later. So that means it immediately jumps down and fires bindable event B as well. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is that we don't have any function connected to bindable event B until the callback function connected to bindable event A executes. And since the callbacks for bindable event A got deferred, they didn't execute yet. This is exactly why this print statement did not appear in our console with deferred signal behavior enabled. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. We have all of our bindables being listened to, so they all have functions connected to them. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire bindable event A, and then we're going to fire bindable event B. Now the function connected to bindable event A, what that's going to do is that it's going to fire bindable event C. Now with immediate signal behavior enabled, what's going to happen is bindable event A is going to be fired. It's going to go through and execute all of the callbacks attached to bindable event A, which includes this one right here. And then it's going to fire bindable event C and it's going to be like, oh, I need to execute all of the callbacks for a bindable event C as well. So it's going to execute this one. And then finally, it'll come back to where it originally fired the event. And then it's going to fire bindable event B. Without deferred events, this is going to execute in A, C, B order. And we can go ahead and prove that. Let's switch the signal behavior to immediate and let's run our game. Bindable A, C, and B executed in this particular order. Just what we would expect. Now let's say we have deferred events enabled. Well now what's going to happen is this. The interpreter is going to go through and once it hits this line right here, it's going to fire bindable event A, which means it's going to queue up all of the callbacks or all of the functions connected to the event at a later point in the frame. And then it's going to do the same thing for bindable event B. So none of the callbacks executed by this point. Then what's going to happen is it's going to first execute all of the callbacks attached to bindable event A, which is this one right here and it's going to encounter bindable event C and we're firing that event. Now, since this is not immediate signaling, what it's going to do is it's going to place any functions connected to bindable event C also at the end of the queue. And that means the next functions that need to be executed are going to be any callbacks attached to bindable event B. And then finally, it'll go back to bindable event C and execute the callback connected to it. So with deferred events, this is going to execute in A, B, C order. At some point later in the frame, then it's going to execute the callback for A, which fires bindable event C, which places this in a queue. So later, the callback for C is placed in queue. So let me actually type this out. So callback A is executed. Callback for C is placed in the queue. And then callback for B is going to be executed. And then afterwards, callback for C is going to be executed because it got placed at the end of the queue. So this is going to be A, B, C order. If we run the game and we take a look, there we go, bindable A, B, and C executed. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more side effect of deferred events, and that's specifically going to be any events relating to a removing event or a destroying event. Now, new scripters, when they see an event like destroying or they see an event like character removing, the descriptions for these events says fired right before a player's character is removed or for the destroying event, it's fired before the instance is destroyed. So a new scripter, what they would expect is that any functions listening to those types of events would be executed right before that particular thing is destroyed. For example, in this case, we're looking at the character here. So with signal behavior set to immediate, what's going to happen is let's say our player resets and then their character model gets cleaned up out of the workspace. Well, before it gets cleaned up out of the workspace, this event is going to fire, signifying the characters being removed. If we print the parent of the character, it's still going to be in the workspace, which confirms that it hasn't been cleaned up yet. Then we'll print 
character is removing, and we'll listen to the ancestry change event for our character. And when it changes, that means we know it's been parented to nil and it's been cleaned up out of the game. So with immediate signal behavior enabled, we should expect to see all of these print statements appear inside of our console. So let's play test the game. And if I reset my character, when it gets cleaned up, all of those print statements should appear. There we go. The parent of my player's character was in the workspace. And then we say the character is being removed. And then we listen to the ancestry changed event. And it says the parent was set to nil. What we would expect perfectly for immediate events. Now, if I swap this to deferred events, you're going to see a little bit of different behavior. Take a look at what gets printed. Nil, character is removing, and we didn't listen to the ancestry changed event. Isn't that kind of disappointing? Why did it print nil? Well, let's go ahead and think about this internally of what's going on behind the scenes in the Roblox game engine, right? So down here, let's just make some pseudo code. Let's just pretend this is what's happening in the background of the game engine. So the game realizes that the player's character has died and it needs to clean it up. So it's going to go in and clean it up. And right before it deletes the player's character, it's going to, let's say, fire that character removing event for the player. So it's going to notify all of the scripts that are listening to the event. Hey, this player's character is about to be removed. Now with immediate signaling, what this means, it's going to go in and execute all the callbacks right away. And then when it's finished with executing those callbacks, then it can go ahead and destroy or remove or clean up whatever the player's character. It works just as we would expect the character removing event is fulfilling its purpose. It's notifying us before the character is removed. Now think about this with deferred events. With deferred events, none of the callbacks are going to be executed. Instead, they're placed in a queue. And because they're placed in the queue, immediately afterwards, the character gets cleaned up and destroyed out of the game. And then at a later point in the current frame, then all of the callbacks for character removing are going to be executed. Do you see an issue with this? Well, the issue is that the character was already removed. It was already destroyed, which is why the parent printed out nil inside of our console. Now, this is a terrible side effect with deferred events. And that's because none of the destroying events or the character removing events or whatever, stuff like that, are no longer fulfilling their purpose. It's counterintuitive now. We would expect this to execute before the instance is destroyed. Before, right? Keyword, before. But with deferred events, that's not happening anymore. Instead, these callbacks are now being executed after the character's already been destroyed. So that's an issue. As long as Roblox fixes this particular issue, then deferred events are ultimately going to be very good for their game engine. But as it stands right now, any new scripters that come into Roblox Studio, they're going to be confused when the removing event, like the character removing event, or the descendant removing event, or let's say the destroying event, they're going to be confused when those particular things have already been destroyed or they've already been removed, even though it's telling them that it's supposed to happen before they're removed or before they're destroyed. So Roblox needs to fix that issue, and then I'll give two thumbs up to the deferred signal behavior. Right now, it's just one thumbs up, but if they fix this particular issue, then it's going to be two thumbs up. I hope this video cleared up any confusion regarding deferred and immediate events, or it might have just confused you even more. I don't really know. But since deferred events are going to be the future for the Roblox platform, it's important to know how these events are handled to prevent any future problems from occurring in your scripts. Thanks for watching.